Welcome to our lecture online. One of the questions that we got from one of our viewers seemed impossible to solve. The question was, if we're given the range and the maximum height, can we find the initial velocity in the angle at which the projectile is fired? And at first I looked at that and go, I don't think so because there's two unknowns and there's no way you can find those two unknowns. But it turns out I dabbled with it a little bit and go, wow, you can actually figure it out. So here it is. Here's the answer to this particular question. The answer is yes, it can be done. And this is how you do that. We do need to use all three equations of kinematics. So let's take a look at the drawing here. We have a projectile that is fired at some unknown initial velocity at some un unknown initial angle. They give us the range and they give us the maximum height. Now, the time to get to the top, we'll just simply call it t to the top. And then the time to get to the full range, let's call that t sub r. And of course, we know that it takes twice as long to go to full range as it does to go to the halfway point, which is the very top of the, pro of the projectile motion. So that means that the time to get to the far range is equal to twice the time that it takes to get to the top. And we're going to need that information. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look and see if we can figure out an equation to describe the distance traveled. And in the x direction, we can call that x is equal to x sub naught plus v initial in the x direction times time, plus one half acceleration times time squared. And of course, since we're dealing with getting to the full range, what we're going to do is, first of all, the x sub naught, we can call that zero, and there's no acceleration in the x direction, so we can call that zero as well. So let's plug in what these are. So to get to the full range r, that is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction, which can be written as this, v initial times the cosine of theta, and of course both theta and v sub naught are not known, times the time, but that's going to be the time to get to the full range, time to get to the full range. And then we're going to solve the equation in the vertical direction. Now before we do that, before we do that, we may want to change this to twice the time to the top because in the second equation, we'll get the time to the top. So let's write this as r is equal to v sub naught times the cosine of theta times two times the time t to the top. Okay, so now we need the second equation for the motion in the vertical direction, realizing that the velocity in the vertical direction at the very top is equal to zero. So here we can say that the velocity in the y direction equals the velocity initial in the y direction plus g times t. Remember that g is a negative 9.8 meters per second square. All right, so plugging in what we know, the velocity at the very top, so at the very top, that velocity is going to be zero in the y direction. The initial velocity in the y direction is going to be v initial times the sine of theta, v initial, times the sine of theta plus g times t to the top. And now what we can do is we can solve this equation for t to the top and substitute it in here. All right, let's do that. So first of all, we get uh, g t to the top is equal to moving this to the other side and turning the equation around. This becomes a minus v initial times the sine of theta. And then we can divide both sides by g, so t to the top is equal to minus v initial times the sine of theta divided by g. And remember that g is a negative 9.8, so the two negative signs would cancel out. We get a positive time to the top. But now we can take this and substitute it in here. So now this gives us r is equal to v sub naught times the cosine of theta times 2 and time to the top would be minus v initial times the sine of theta divided by g. And then what we could do is we could um, combine the v sub naughts. And so we could write this as r is equal to minus 2 v sub naught squared times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta all divided by g. Okay, so now we have the range in terms of v initial and the angle theta. Assuming, of course, that we were given the range, so the range is a known quantity. 
But now we need to get rid of the V initial. So now we have another equation that doesn't involve time that we might be able to use to get rid of V initial. So let's try that. So V initial squared equals, oh, not V initial squared, V squared equals V initial squared plus two, well, in what direction are we talking about? Hmm, in the horizontal direction or vertical direction? How about the vertical direction? Because that way we can take V at the top and that would be equal to zero. So, so let's go to, in the vertical direction. Vertical direction, V squared, so V in the Y direction squared equals V initial in the Y direction squared plus two times the acceleration, which would be g, times the change in the height, change in y. So that's our equation of kinematics not involving t. And let's plug in everything we know. So at the very top, at the top, v initial in the y direction would be 0 is equal to v initial in the y direction. So v initial in the y direction squared, which is the same as well, we'll get there in just a moment. V initial in the y direction squared plus 2g times the height, and that would be h. Remember, h is given as well. The height and the range was given. So v initial in the y direction, that would be equal to v initial times the sine of theta. So 0 is equal to v initial times the sine of theta. Now we have to square that, so this is squared and this is squared, plus 2gh. And then I can solve that for V initial because I want to get rid of this V initial here and V initial there. So moving this across, I can say V initial squared times the sine square of theta is equal to moving that across minus 2GH. Remember that G is negative, so those two negatives cancel out. And then we can write that V initial squared is equal to minus 2GH over the sine square of theta. And now what we could do is, and let me show, we can now replace this v initial squared by this v initial squared. And we do that, we get rid of the v initial and only have one, one variable left, which is theta. All right, so now I guess I need to go to this side of the board. Let's call this, bring this across over here. And so now we can write that r is equal to minus 2 times v initial squared, which is this quantity right here. So that would be times a minus 2gh divided by the sine square of theta. So it takes care of this. And now we still need this right here, which is a sine of theta, sine of theta, cosine of theta divided by g. All right, now don't panic because we can simplify some things. We have a g here, we have a g there. We have a sine here and a sine square there. And the minuses cancel out, so we have the range is equal to 4 h cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. So we can write that r divided by 4 h is equal to the cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta. And then we can say that 4h over r is equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. I like this one better because then what we can do is this is equal to the tangent of theta. And finally, we can say that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of 4h over r. So since they give us h and they give us r, we can then actually calculate the inverse tangent. Now, that gives us theta. What about v sub naught? Well, v sub naught is right here. So if we take the square root of both sides, we can say that v sub naught is equal to the square root of minus 2gh divided by the sine squared of theta. Now, remember that g is a minus 9.8. So the minus of the g and the minus over here cancel out. So we have a positive quantity because we have to take the square root. And then whatever pops out of here, we then plug that in here to get v sub naught. So there you got the two equations now in order to calculate the angle and the initial velocity if you're given the range and the height. 
And that is how it's done. In this case, three equations. So since I'm out of board space, let's do one more video and we'll plug in some values and get the actual results, see how, that's, how that works, and see if there's any limitations to this thing. So you already found it. Yeah, but let's use some real numbers to get a feel for it. Okay, we'll do that in the next video.